So a couple of weeks ago, we had some pretty nasty weather. A storm had come through and it left a bunch of wind. There was actually some tornadoes that touched down. I was perfectly safe, but it was close. And what does that mean? Well, it means I need to go to the beach and see what that storm kicked up and what is going to be left there. In the distance, you can see the Sanibel Lighthouse because we're headed over to Sanibel. I recently acquired a Sanibel parking permit, so in the new year, we'll be visiting new places on Sanibel, and today's visit will be a low tide, post storm, beach combing excursion, and we're gonna find some great shells along the way. And we're also gonna learn a bit about scallops because we're gonna see a whole bunch of live ones, and we're gonna see some new things we haven't seen before. So if you're ready to see what kind of goodies are on the beach today, let's go to the beach. So we finally made it, it's really early, and we're here on Sanibel. This is a different location, and I'm gonna tell you all about that a little bit later in the video. But we have made it here even before the sun came up. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a little chilly, 52 degrees, so I do have my scuba pants on. Although I don't know how much I'll be actually going in the water, because at first glance, it looks like there's all sorts of fun stuff up here on the beach. We are going to see a lot of scallops today. That's pretty typical for Cinnabelle in one, two, post storm. Oh, here's some barnacles on a calico scallop. And here is a hinged, whoopsies, a hinged disc docemia. So that's another shell that is relatively plentiful when the storms come through. That was one of the ones that tend to get pushed up onto the beach. Now check out this urchin. And I was really kind of examining it because that looks different to me. Doesn't look like that short spined sea urchin I normally see. So this is where I really want to be. I really want to be in the water, but the sun's not up. I can't really see. Doesn't look like there's so much on there in the water there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of see what I can find in the rack line. Now that is another one of those sea urchins that's looking a lot different to me. And I'm gonna figure that out in a little bit. Check this out. So that's a calico scallop, a beautiful orange calico scallop. Gorgeous, can't keep that one, but we're gonna keep looking. Here's another shell that we cannot keep because there is an inhabitant. So that is a juvenile fighting conch. And there is a little somebody in there. So I'm just gonna help a critter out. The, the tide is extremely low. So it was <laughs> quite a walk to get all the way to the water. And the water actually felt warm. The water is in low 70s now and the air is 50. So little, little converse. The water felt much warmer, but it really was very pretty so we're just going to kind of meander around see what we can find on this early chilly morning here on Sanibel Island plenty of shells yep some arcs definitely scallops urchins oh dear that is a one of those sea stars and like I said the tide is way out there it'll come in there's another one of those it's another little urchin. And your crossbarred Venus we got. Here's another one. Itty bitty little guy. Yeah, those are deceased. They are not viable. So I'm probably going to hold on to those. What else do we see here? Oh. All right, I was looking. I did come across a critter. That is a short spined sea star. This one I'm gonna bring back into the water. Man, it, I, I'm not gonna bring everything into the water today. Just some of the stuff because that's all I would have done. And the tide is gonna come back in. 
these critters will be okay. It's just some of the times I can't help myself. So let's just take a peek. Let's see what's going on here. Most of this stuff is the common things, those arcs. That is one of the most prolific and abundant shells down here, along with the crossbarred Venus shells. And so we're going to pick through all these until we find some a little more interesting, like this turkey wing. So actually, technically, this is an arc as well. It's also called a zigzag arc but I like to call it a turkey wing. <gasps> Look at the color. And that generally happens with these creatures that are either still alive or recently deceased. The color is just gorgeous. Looks like I'm going for another color with this bright yellow prickly cockle. So that is a yellow prickly cockle. And you can easily tell by looking at the reverse side of these shells. And this is a calico scallop. That's actually a nice size calico scallop too. It's got a little bit of beach stuff on it and that's okay. And I can tell I'm already looking at something else. Here's another one, okay. Yeah, probably not a keeper, so we'll leave that one. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, well here is a perfect segue. So we do have a calico scallop with a couple of slipper snails on them. And we're gonna talk about slipper snails for a minute here. So this is a pen shell, again, covered with those slipper snails. Now the young slipper snails are quite mobile, but the mature ones, like the ones you see here, they will live in a slipper shell stack. Now the males will stack on top of the females below, and without getting into too much detail, because this is a family-friendly channel, they do this to make it easy to make new baby slipper snails. Now, if a female on the bottom dies or stops giving off those female hormones, the males on top will change to female, ensuring that there are always females at the bottom of the pile. So if you happen to find some of these live critters and you see them all piled up, really good chance that the females are on the bottom and the males are on the top. Kind of interesting. Okay, so let's talk urchins. So those other ones are really, they were confounding me. So these two here, these are purple sea urchins, whereas that one there, that is a short spined sea urchin. And I knew they looked a little different and I couldn't quite piece it together. And then once I saw them all together, I could see clearly they're just very different. Okay, the sun is finally starting to come up. It's not gonna help me in the uh, temperature department. It's gonna stay cool for a little while. But boy, it's pretty. Real pretty morning. Okay, we have a Florida fighting conch with nobody in it. It is relatively clean. So I am going to keep that fighting conch. And so this is a lot of what the day was like, just kind of combing through all sorts of stuff, seeing what might catch my eye, like this banded tulip. Very nice find. And its aperture, its opening is almost not chipped at all, so that's a great find, banded tulip. Ooh. Right here we have a bay scallop. I don't typically find them that big, but that's a real nice looking base scallop. They get up to be about four inches big. So they do get to be a little bigger. Now, speaking of awesome scallops, look at this one. So this is a rough scallop. And it, it, yeah, so I'm, it typically does have a texture. It, it is a actually rough surface. So that is where that shell gets its name, a rough scallop. And here we have, I'm gonna flip it over and you can see that buttery color. This is a buttercup leucine. There are a bunch of different leucines. This one just happens to be that buttercup variety, which you can clearly tell. Just flip it over if it's yellow, you're probably looking at a buttercup leucine. And this is a lightning whelk. It's got a little beach stuff and that's okay. It's a decent size, nice looking shell. So that is a keeper, lightning whelk. All right, scanning, looking to see if there's anything else. And I did pick up a couple of urchins. Ooh, that is a gorgeous lightning whelk. Terrific color. Now these are, they're really quite common after the Florida fighting conch. I'm gonna say that the lightning whelk is probably the second most available collectible shell that I tend to come upon. <gasps> 
Look at what I see. All right, that is an alphabet cone and that is a fantastic find. It is not poisonous to the point it will kill you. If you happen to be stung, it's more like a bee sting. So the cones here in Florida, they're, you know, they're not friendly or anything, but they're not gonna kill you. And here we have another banded tulip. Fantastic. So I got some two great shells out of that one little visit. All right, another fighting conch. It's kind of checking out the patterns. I love these because there's just, there's so many different attributes to these shells. And I was just kind of like to pick them up, see if there's anything a little different about them. All right, that is another one of the purple sea urchins. And you can tell the body, the test, well, I can tell. It's a little bit more squishier. It's a little bit flatter than the other urchin, like this one, which is a short spined sea urchin. And this one was viable. So again, can't help myself. I'm gonna bring it on down to the water. Plus I'd like to check, you never know. Sometimes I'm dropping something off in the water and there'll be something for me to pick up. So let's just see. Yep, in with the urchin and got myself a scallop. Okay. All right, that is a juvenile fighting conch. Some of the patterns on those are so pretty. And I like this one because it's actually really just one color. So that's kind of fun. So the birds were having a delightful buffet of seafood. Yet there was no shortage of birds looking for a snack on mostly the scallops, I would suspect. Look at that calico scallop. Yeah, it's still alive, so we're going to leave that one at the beach. But man, that color, beautiful. Oh, no. All right, we got a critter. So this is called a brittle star. It's got all its little limbs. I don't know if this guy is expired or if it's okay. So just out of a, an abundance of caution, I'm going to... Put this little critter back in the water and continue looking for fun things like this pear whelk. All right, we're going to talk about pear whelks and fig shells. So this is a pear whelk. If you look at the spire, the top of it kind of goes, it's a little bit pointy. It doesn't really, it's not flat. It's got a little bit of something on there. And if you look at the paper fig, that's much flatter. It's more monochrome. It has kind of a texture to the shell where the pear whelk has those stripes on it like that so I know they look really similar but hopefully that'll help just a little bit kind of tease those two different types of shells apart all right beautiful dark apple murex and I consider these to be in good condition if they really have a lot of the texture still to them it's not beach worn and yes I did see that horse conch that I missed in that last shot Rah. All right, another apple murex, another great one. It's got some nice texture. You never know what you're gonna find at the beach. And here, you've, you've heard of yoga on the beach, right? I have seen people doing yoga on the beach and that's what this snail reminded me of. I think he's doing a little yoga. So he probably already did his meditation. He's gonna go into his downward sea snail position and he's gonna do a little breathing. Salt air in. Exhale, salt air, mentally going through the intentions for the day. So we will leave this sea snail to do its yoga thing, and we're going to go ahead and continue our walk. All right, now this particular shell, which is inhabited, so we cannot keep it. Look at the pinkish, like purple color. I've seen them where the whole shell is almost that pink. Oh, <laughs> I want to keep it, but all of these little critters are actually alive. I wanted to just do a quick double check because the shells are just so very beautiful, especially on the juveniles for whatever reason. So I do a quick check of these just to make sure there's no keepers. Yep, alive, alive. Bummer, that last one, gorgeous. All right, well, none of those are keepers, so we're just going to keep, we're going to keep looking to see what else we're going to find. We're going to find a chestnut turban. Oh dear. Well, it's a little chipped. That's okay. We're going to hold it like that. It looks great. So I'm going to hold on to that. Probably for some project that I talk about that hopefully one day I'll get around to. 
All right, here we have another lightning whelk. Great color on that. Oh, a bonus little arc on the inside there. Cool lightning whelk. All right, and this is a channeled duck clam, and it also is known as an elephant ear and a sailor's ear. So some of these shells have all sorts of different like little nicknames. That's one of them. Oh, I found an apple murex. There does seem to be a lot of them today. And they're, most of them are in really good shape too. Lots of texture, lots of beautiful color. Awesome. And then have to peek at this gorgeous, ugh, probably a live scallop. That looks great. Oh, it's so pretty. Womp womp. So I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about where I am and why there's other people and we'll get into all that, but the tide is still like super low. In the winter, it gets very, very low. It's warmed up marginally. It's three degrees warmer, now it's 55. And now it's time for you to enjoy some beach time. A gaudy nautica. Well, all right, so this is a colorful moon snail, so it is in the moon snail family. This is rather beat up, but it very well be may be the only one I find today, so I'm probably gonna hold on to that. And here we have another moon snail. Let's take a peek at the other side. All right, so there are shark eyes and there are false shark eyes. They're both in the shark eye family. This one, I'm going with a true shark eye. Very cool. <gasps> Look at that. All right, so that is a calico scallop and that one, pretty big. They only get to be about 2.7 inches, but it's beautiful. I mean, the color on it is fantastic and it's a keeper, yes. And an egg cockle. All right, something a little different. I don't find them all the time. I like them, they do have a natural shine to them, which is kind of fun. So I've been showing you a lot of the area, but let's talk about exactly where I am. Now, typically I'm here at Bowman's Beach and I walk up to here, Blind Pass. That's normally where I walk around. And you'll notice when you zoom in, there's not a lot of access. So the only way to get to the beach in that area is either coming on at Bowman's or coming on at Blind Pass. Now this is the area that I am in. Here's the lighthouse over here. And I parked over here and I started here and then I walked to the north. Now, when you zoom into this area, you can see all the different access areas onto the beach. So Bowman's, once you get there, the only people you're really going to encounter are people who've already walked quite a while. Here, there's much more of an opportunity to run into people because there's a lot more access to the beach. So if you want the beach to yourself, I'm gonna recommend you start up at Bowman's. If you don't mind the company, by all means, hang out down here. Found another really pretty calico scallop. Just gorgeous. And another, all right, I'm gonna let you decide. Is that a pear whelk or a paper fig? If you guessed pear whelk, you would be correct. That is a pear whelk. And this particular fighting conch happens to be a gorgeous orange color. So these shells can be yellowish, orangish, brown, patterned, all different colors. And I just love them. Check out all the scallops. Now, like I said, the tide is really, really low. It's like a super low tide. So lots of things have gotten stranded up on the beach. So I got an opportunity to see some of the things I don't normally see. Now, normally, I don't see the live scallops like this because the tide is so low and it's very shallow and you can kind of see them in their natural environment doing their thing. So this is a calico scallop. Look at how cool that is. And you can kind of see its little eyeballs, which I 
had never seen, I never really noticed. Now let's talk about scallops for just a minute. Calico scallops are found in coastal waters in the eastern U.S. states from Maryland to Florida, throughout the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean Sea, all the way down to Brazil. Now, calico scallops generally live in depths of 30 to 1,200 feet on sandy or shell-bottomed lined oceans. The typical lifespan of a calico scallop is 18 months, and they're not going to get that big. That I had mentioned it earlier, the biggest size maximum is about 2.7 inches wide. Now, calico scallops pump water across gills to filter out food particles, and that's what we were watching the other guy do. And then they use their large abductor muscles to open and close their shells like that. Now, when they do this quickly, this reflex will propel the scallop off of the bottom into a new location on the seafloor. Now, calico scallops have several blue eyes, and we, we've seen those, very cool, located in the mantle cavity along the edge of the shell. And they use those eyes to detect shadows and movement, kind of try uh, to protect themselves. So I had never seen this. As many times as I have seen calico scallops, low tide, I've just never seen this combination together. And I thought it was just fascinating to see the living scallops filter feeding, seeing their little eyeballs. I thought that that was so cool. So now we know a little bit more about these gorgeous calico scallops. I spy a common nutmeg with some stuff. Yes, no problem. A little bit of beach stuff that wipes right off. So that is a common nutmeg. I generally just call them nutmegs. Good size. Looks like it had to repair itself at some point. <gasps> Look at the color on that one. All right, can we keep it? We can. Yay. So that's a calico scallop. Gorgeous pink purplish color. Right on. And here we have a giant Atlantic cockle, also known as a heart cockle. Make fantastic bowls, all sorts of fun crafts and things you can do with those guys. Those are really kind of pretty too. Okay, so here we have an apple murex snacking on a calico scallop. And there's some barnacles mixed in there too. So we have a whole little thing going on here. So the apple murex does eat bivalves. The scallop is a bivalve. So he is probably munching away. It's gonna be some dinner. And here we have another creature. This is a drill, an Atlantic oyster drill that has adhered itself to that calico scallop. And I suspect it's probably gonna to try to drill a hole through the shell and gobble up the insides. Also, it's a shell eat shell world. Ooh, an apple murex, which is empty. Now this is a lot lighter. The other ones we've been finding have been much darker. It's a real pretty lighter apple murex. Oh, another chestnut turban. Uh, it's a little chipped, but that's not really the problem. The problem is there's a critter in there. And that's not necessarily a problem either. I'm just not able to keep the shell. So there is a wee little crab in there. That would be considered live shelling. So if you find a shell with a crab in it, please put it back in the water. It is illegal and not cool to keep them. Tide is very low. I am not alone. I am sharing the beach and that is okay. Now there's a bunch of people digging. There's a bunch of different ways you can kind of go about getting these goodies. Just And there's no right or wrong way. I just happen to prefer to do a lot of walking and kind of just seeing what I come upon. For the most part, I tend to find some pretty good stuff. I'm bummed I'm not in the water. I'm up here in the rack line, but that's okay. That's another one of those purple sea urchins. Look at the spikes on that. And it's a much flatter animal than the, I know I had mentioned that earlier, than the short spine sea star. Wow. I'd love to see one of those in all its glory with all its spikes, but this is the first time I've ever seen these. And they have perished, but still happy to collect a couple of these purple sea urchins. I love finding new things. Oh, all right. This isn't new, but something we haven't found today. This is an angel wing. That's in fantastic shape. No little pinholes. It's even got its little scoopy thing on the inside. That is the technical term, scoopy thing. Awesome, awesome angel wing. Oh, and here's another base scallop of 
relatively good size. I don't usually find them this big. Actually, most shells down here are kind of on the medium to small size, so it's unusual to find something that big, unless it's, a, I guess, a big old base scallop, a lightning whelk, or a horse conch. Whoa! Okay, critter! So it was kind of like flipping its little legs and whatnot around, and I didn't want to touch it because I was afraid it might be a mantis shrimp. So that is my guess of what this is. I don't know for sure. I've seen one of these in the past and I erroneously called it a um, slipper lobster, I think is what I misidentified it as. So I do think that this is a mantis shrimp. Um, not sure by all means, correct me in the comments if you think otherwise. They are fascinating. They will whack you. They have these little powerful front claws that they bash other shells with. They're really kind of interesting. So I, again, I could be wrong. I'm not really sure. I'm a little bit better with my shell ID than I am with shrimp, but I'm thinking that's what that might be. So I'm going to put that critter back in the ocean and continue our walk and see what else we can find. All right, looks like we found another lightning whelk. Very nice. I wish, it's it's hard to find the really big ones. The small ones are relatively easy to find. <gasps> awesome. So we're looking at a shark eye here. Oh, and it's a Paul Newman shark eye. Awesome. So it's got that blue little eyeball. So that's what they call a Paul Newman. And it is not a false shark eye. Not that it really matters, but I like to know. Inquiring minds like to know. What do you think that is? We've already talked about that. Here's another example. So that is a paper fig. And for whatever reason, I do tend to find these over in Sanibel. You can kind of see the texture on that shell. So those are two paper figs. This is a dystocemia, but let's talk about that drill hole because shark eyes drill a counter sunk hole. So the inside's gonna be a little bigger than that outside. So I'm pretty sure that's what drilled that hole. Here we have a bubble shell. We'll pick up something a little different. Those are cute little shells. They're called bubbles. And I'm really torn. I really like being in the water, but I'm really finding a lot of stuff up on the beach with the people, and there's not really a whole lot in the water anyway. I peek every time I kind of come close, but there's not all that much action there, so I'm kind of sticking to the beach. Here's another really pretty calico scallop, all sorts of colors. I love the, the purples, the oranges, it can be white. They're so pretty. Here's a little pelican taking a break. And I just wanted to just throw this out as a reminder. When you go to the beach, don't chase the birds. Sometimes they get tired. They don't have any like little bird houses to hang out in. So when these storms come, they have to hide somewhere and they need their energy. So don't chase the birds. Here we have another banded tulip. This guy looks like it had to repair itself at some point. And there's also a bonus because there's an arc shell inside. So that's a two for one. This is a short spined, short spined sea star. See that 10 times fast. And that had expired. I almost always return them to the water, but that one was a keeper. And here we have a horse mussel. And I was just intrigued. I don't typically collect things like this, but the inside, that nacre, is just so beautiful. So in addition to all the scallops and everything else, we do have some mussels here as well. And here we have another critter. So this is a horse conch. It is quite alive. So if there's anything inside that shell, anything at all kind of gooey, mushy, it's probably the sea snail. So we're going to want to leave that at the beach and if all possible, put it back in the water. There is another, at least that one is a keeper. Gorgeous calico scallop that probably was snacked on by a bird. It is what it is, and I guess I get to keep the rewards. Now this looks like a horse conch, right? Color says horse conch, shape says ribbed cantharis. So that is a ribbed cantharis that's just kind of a wacky orange color, which I think is cool. All right, oh, looky here. All right, it's got some beach stuff on it, but that is a lace murex. And I'm trying to determine, I'm looking at it like, yeah, I probably can work with that. I could probably clean that up. So I'm gonna hold on to that. Okay, here we have another battle. This is a sharp ribbed drill and a gulf oyster drill. 
And uh, yeah, someone's going to win at some point. I don't know who's trying to eat who, who is drilling into who. Like I said, it is a snail eat snail world. Good luck, guys. May the best snail win. This was just a little piece sticking out, and look what I got. All right, gorgeous apple murex. Nice size, beautiful color. It's got all its texture. It's not beach worn. Beautiful. And this time of year is coming when we're going to start seeing egg casings. So that is a pear whelk egg casing. And there's itty bitty little snails inside the case. And if I don't know and I'm not sure, I try to let, it's probably not going to survive, but I'm going to put it in the water anyway. And this is another gorgeous calico scallop. Just the color was so pretty. And I, I could, they're not the same on either side. They're different. That was something else the first time I saw that I thought was unusual. So the sides are not the same color. So birds are snacking, people are finding shells and whatnot. It's a beautiful day on the beach. It has warmed up to a lovely 62. And at this point, I'm sad I've got scuba pants on. And look at the tide's coming in, but it's still negative 0.48. So the tide was so low. It was such a good day to be on the beach. So let's review. So I did get that one sea star, a whole bunch of those different urchins. So I was really happy about that. The paper figs, the channel duck clam, a couple of dystocenias, the buttercup leucine, the yellow prickly cockle, the angel wing, a bunch of those cool scallops, including that big old bay scallop. The colors were just fantastic. Some murexes, some Florida fighting conchs. We have some lightning whelks, some pear whelks. That shark eye is awesome. A couple banded tulips, which is really cool. And then my favorite finds of the day were that rough scallop, that beautiful calico scallop, the alphabet cone, and the lace murex. So I thought it was awesome. It was nice to explore a different part of Sanibel. And this is when I want to give a big shout out to my Patreons who support me. And I appreciate you so very, very much. And everybody else who comes along for my walks, thank you. Thank you for your comments. You guys sometimes give me the information I need to push out to everybody else. So if they think there's something I need to know, please leave it in the comment section. I read every single one. Next week, we're kayaking. We're going to the 10,000 Islands. Believe me, it is an adventure. So you have a great week and I will see you again next Sunday.